For this video, uh, I'm going to install a uh, lower garage door seal uh, on my father's uh, garage. This is my garage. I'm just using this as an example. Um, and uh, my brother uh, Matt stopped by to give me a hand and also my dad Al, uh, he was helping out. So just want to share a couple of uh, warning signs or things to look for if you're going to do something similar to what I did on his door because effectively we uh, made the bottom of his door longer uh, by an inch and a half or so. So when you do that, this is about two inches longer. So what you gotta watch out for is the clearance between the end of the door and uh, the face seal in, the, in this board. So as you can see here, it's touching. So on my door, we could probably go about an inch and a half, and that's about what we did on my dad's door is we extended the door about an inch and a half, and it was really close uh, to this board and this uh, side seal. Another thing to uh, think about is if you're gonna use the brush attachment on your uh, door seal, that uh, you want to make sure that you've got clearance for the brush, not so much over here on the side because you're going to have it on this side, but uh, for this top seal or any other structural components you have here. Uh, for example, my dad's got a, uh, a triangular feature here, and that brush wouldn't clear that at all. Um, and also, if you put the brush on the inside of the door, watch out for your uh, door sensor that goes across the bottom of the door because, of course, if the uh, brush happens to break the beam, then uh, it's going to cause the garage door to automatically open. Here's the box as received. Uh, I uh, opened it up. There's the instructions. As a lot of other people have commented, the instructions are pretty, uh, pretty sketchy. There's the one piece for the uh, rubber seal. And it's approximately four inches wide with a uh, one inch round on it. This is the piece I wanted to get. This has got uh, basically the angle iron. It's got the slot for the brush and the two T slots for the uh, rubber. And there'll be five of these. And there's the brushes. There should be five of those, I see. The brushes are two inches long. And finally, you get a bag of screws. And uh, here's the problem. <clears throat> you got a bit of a gap on each end, and we've got a high spot here in the center. So, um, and even if you adjust the garage door farther down, um, by the time it seals, try almost seals both ends, then the bar up at the top starts getting bent. Now this will be pushing down so hard that it's gonna bend this bar, which is gonna mess up your garage door opener. So that's not a good idea. Um, you can see so that's when I bought the kit. So I un unlatched the uh, garage door from the garage door opener. So I got a little air room to play with. And at this position here, you can see the rubber seal is past the uh, rails, or the, um, <clears throat> yeah, the rails for the wheels. Um, and check each end of the rubber to uh, make sure there's not a lock screw in there. Sometimes you put a screw in there to keep this from uh, moving. Uh, then uh, we're gonna try and slide this out from this end. We'll get just a couple feet here to work with, and we'll try to slide that out. So this groove's been pinched, so I'm gonna to have to uh, pry this open so I can slide it out.
So here you can see the cross section of this uh, seal. It's a little different than uh, most of my saw online. So uh, I've got the rubber molding off the, uh, the original rubber molding off the bottom of the door. And now the door is down. You can see that it's almost touching here in the middle. And then at each end, it's about, about an inch and a half gap on each end. So that's what we're gonna try and make up uh, with this new uh, uh, bottom door seal. Uh, this uh, garage door is a double wall, so it's apparently insulated. Um, and it's a uh, one and three eighths uh, thick or wide. Uh, it's 16 feet long, so the kit's 16.5. So uh, this is the, the, this sits on the bottom of the garage door. That's just under two inches uh, wide. There you can see the two T-slots for the rubber. Uh, they are about an inch and a quarter apart. And then this piece here, the information is a little sketchy online, but uh, in fact, that's just over an inch and a half. So this is, uh, will be basically be the bottom of the door just to show you how this is all gonna fit together, or at least what my plan is. So this would be the bottom of the door and uh, this is wider than the door is. So I'm gonna put a strip here. And I bought this PVC to fit on the outside of uh, the door. Uh, this is where the brush goes, and here's where the rubber uh, seal goes with the two T-slots. I'm not gonna use the brush. I'm not quite sure what that's for. There's not a real good explanation for it in the uh, website. Uh, so we're gonna leave this out. Oh. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the help. yeah, thanks for the help, good job. Uh, and we're gonna put it like this. I think uh, the brush is actually designed to go on the outside of the door, um, but I'm gonna put this on the inside of the door. I'm sorry, this will be on the outside of the door and this yeah. will be on the inside of the door. Okay. So I've got the door down all the way, the rubber strip is off. This is the uh, trim piece I'm gonna put on the inside and it's a little shorter than I, I should have got. I should have got something a little bit higher. So the uh, rubber seal is gonna have to make up a little bit of the uh, gap because I need to screw this to the bottom of the door. So I've got a pencil line as a guide, so we're gonna attach this uh, to the bottom of the door. And this is also gonna uh, help us line up the aluminum pieces on the outside. So I moved in a couple of tables here so that we don't have to work down on the floor to get the uh, strips on here. And I got the pencil mark on there as kind of a guideline where we're gonna put it. So what I'm gonna do is I uh, bought some Gorilla uh, double-sided tape, and uh, we're gonna put that on the door so we can kind of get the uh, strip position. So I'm gonna use the um, pencil mark as a rough guide as to where I wanna put the uh, PVC strip. Are you getting it? Uh, I oh, good. Oh, oh, you got it? On. Yeah, I got it. All right, good. That's a good idea. Press it on there. Yeah, I've been, been kind of going down this line. All right, so that got uh, the one sticky side on the door. And I'll peel this uh, blue backer off of it. And uh, go ahead and pull that all the way down. Now we're going to see if this thing is sticky enough to... Uh, to hold the PVC strip on there. Okay, so the rollers, they move in and out, so you don't want to be right up against the rollers. In this case, it looks like we're below it anyway. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stick it on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And that's basically going to be the new bottom edge of our door. So we're going to pre-drill the uh, PVC, but I'm not going to go all the way through the PVC because I don't want to drill into the metal. Uh, the screws that I've got um, are some uh, uh, self-tapping self screws, and uh, those will drill through the aluminum really easy, and they'll also drill the rest of the way through the PVC to break through to the aluminum. So I don't want to 
mess up the integrity of this. The drill is slightly smaller than this, so it's actually going to thread into uh, the PVC all the way, but it shouldn't be too tight. So we're going to go ahead and mark a uh, number of places where we want to drill the holes and put screws in. So we got a tape measure. So I'll start at uh, one inch. And uh, let's see, we'll just go about every, yeah, let's go about every nine inches. Yep, nine should be set or so. Uh, we need eight. We need something. Okay. All right, so we're going to drill. I don't know, there's probably about 20 holes here to drill. So we want to make sure that we're going to drill into the door. And like I said, I don't want to drill all the way through the PVC. So we've got a little piece of tape here to mark uh, the depth. why you didn't want to drill a bigger hole? Because uh, I want it as snug as possible. I don't want it to be loose so that it can... Uh... So we've got the uh, PVC strips on there and uh, the PVC strips in a little bit of a bow. And as you can see, we still have about a half inch gap there and a half inch gap over here. So, uh, but we gained uh, uh, probably about one inch. Here in the center, the PVC strip is right at the bottom of the door. So I can't move the PVC up because the door is gonna still be touching the, the floor. So, so piece is going to go on the outside of the door like this. So the door will be in here. This is on the bottom. So I want to drill some holes in here. The original pieces already have some holes in them and we're going to use those as a guide to put some holes in the front faces instead of in the bottom. Uh, you know actually if we um, if we just use this and just drill then it will walk. Yeah you're right. Let me try that. This looks like it's Let's going to be good it. enough. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. That might work. Hit one. All right. Well, let's try it. <laughs> Maybe I should get the sharp drills. <laughs> Here they go. Let me see how much compression I made. Barely dented it. This is just a random drill that I got. Yeah, they don't. They don't slip. Flush on that end? Uh, not. All right. That's it. That gets us uh, five pretty clean holes. Oh, see, I got my little dimple there. Yeah. Well, and we're going to cover it up. We're going to use these screws. <laughs> which are uh, number eight by three quarters inch long. And those almost fit in there, so that'll be good. Now these are not self-drilling, but uh, that aluminum is pretty thin, so we're hoping that that tip is just gonna poke through. It's gonna poke through that? Through that thin aluminum. You think that's aluminum? Yep. Is that steel? The door? Ooh, might be steel, you're right. But it should poke through. Uh, <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> you don't want All right, that's fine. Should we try it? Yeah, let's try it. Let's see if it'll if it'll poke through or not, okay. right? Okay. Here, you give it a try. Let me hold that. Yeah, you, yeah, you hold it where you want it. And I'm just gonna try it anywhere. All right. So.
All right, so I'm holding it flush with the uh, end of the door. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you almost went too far. You almost stripped it yeah, out. Is there a adjustment on this? No. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Since that works so well, yeah, exactly. We've got all the pieces, uh, aluminum pieces, uh, pre drilled, and uh, we cut the uh, one piece off to the correct length. Now we're, we're going to try and get the rubber in there. I've got a little bit of a uh, couple uh, uh, dashes of uh, uh, soap detergent and uh, with some water so we can squirt it on there to help lubricate it. So here's what I have. This piece on that end. Yeah, hold on here. Hold on. I don't know how much of this. Oh, we have cut off. It's cut off. Oh my goodness. Why don't you take it off? Because I'm afraid of stripping the screws. That was a good idea. Yeah. All right, so uh, after we got the strip on here, it uh, sealed up pretty good. Had to make some adjustments to the down force and the down travel, of course, on the uh, garage door opener. And uh, we also had to make some adjustments on the tracking um, because the door was actually sitting up a little bit higher. But anyway, this is the result. You can see a little bit of light, but it's probably less than a, it looks worse than it is. And there you go. Perfect. And thanks for watching.